While most great artwork enjoys great fame, some tend to hover under the radar. One work in particular seems to have made it through hundreds of years totally unrecognized, even though most Americans carry it in their pockets. You may have never looked closely at a $1 bill. We're going to today. I'm Julie Hartman, and this is Timeless. Hey everyone, welcome to Timeless. I hope that you're having a great week. Just a reminder to hit the subscribe button down below so that you can stay notified every time I post a Julie Noted news video or a Timeless episode. And also be sure to follow me on Instagram and Twitter at Julie R. Hartman. We recently just did an episode about magic. We had this great magician on Mark Fury. And if you go onto my Instagram, you'll see him do some pretty cool tricks that left all of us here on the Timeless set with our jaws on the floor. I hope to do that for you again by the end of this episode. That is, leave your jaw on the floor because we are analyzing the $1 bill today. And I promise you, it is just riveting to look through each of the different symbols and design of this piece of cash, and you just see how it really is, as I said in the introduction, a great piece of artwork that has a lot of national history embedded in it. I have to tell you how this came up one day. It was a weekend, and I was just thinking about show ideas. The great thing about this show is that I want to bring all of the cool things in life to you, whether it's magic, whether it's talking about owls, whether it's talking about great art, literature, music. I want to alert you all to the things that sometimes we pass over and bring it to your attention for your enjoyment. And so I was just thinking, what if I analyzed uh, international money? because I was sitting in my room, I opened my drawer, I found some old uh, money from, from uh, countries that I had traveled to, and I thought, wow, it could be really interesting to look at these different nations, see some of their leaders, and you know what this, the symbols on the money mean. And then I took a moment and I went, wait a minute, I'm not gonna do this for other countries until I've done it for my own. I haven't really taken a good look at the $1 or $5 or $10 bill in my pocket. So like the nerd I am, I went to downstairs, found a magnifying glass that is just out on one of the tables for decoration, took it to my room and spent about two hours with a magnifying glass looking at the $1 bill and writing down my impressions. To this day, I still do this sometimes just for fun and I find a new thing to look at every time. But today we're going to look at some of the more obvious symbols and some of the less obvious symbols and to talk about how this bill became designed. So again, we're focusing on the $1 today. I could do shows if you want on the five, 10, 20, $100 bills. They will each be riveting. I could even do some shows on coins. We can rename this uh, show, Timeless. Maybe we can rename it to the Money Analyzing Show. Maybe Timeless is a little bit of a better name. But I have gotten so into this, I have to tell you, as a hobby that I literally could do several shows on it. But we're doing the $1 today. And each bill, by the way, is different. If you look at the $5 bill, for instance, there's not the same Federal Reserve note. They don't have the same great seal on the front. It's just a big portrait of Abraham Lincoln. The $100 bill actually has uh, uh, lines from the Declaration of Independence superimposed on the front. These bill designers are quite clever because they give us new things to look at which each, with each uh, bill that they produce. The $1 bill, as we know it today, was really, uh, the design was solidified in 1963. The $1 bill is printed on cotton, that's 75% of the bill, and linen, which is 25% of the bill. And it also contains red and blue security fibers inside of the bill. Isn't that cool? Obviously, you can't see the red and blue, but I just think it's a fun fact to know that every single piece of uh, paper money that you have has the colors of our nation, that is red, white, and blue in them, even, of course, if you cannot see the red and blue. 
A dollar bill has an average of a 5.8 year lifespan. Now this dollar bill, and I'll show you how you can identify this, is a series 2017, so that means it's over six years old. So this bad boy is already well past its prime. You can probably tell a little bit, it's fraying at the edges, but the average lifespan is 5.8 years for just this one dollar. An estimated 12 to 13 billion dollars are currently circulated around the United States. And these are some pretty wholesome facts that I'm telling you. Alert, trigger alert, what you're about to hear isn't as wholesome. Did you know that 90% of all paper money in the United States has cocaine residue on it? Probably all used by Hunter Biden, am I right? <laughs> cocaine, sadly, was just found recently in the White House. I bet a lot of the money laying around there has cocaine residue on it, but chances are this dollar that I have in my hand has residue, 90% according to several sources online. Even government sources affirm that this is true. Though, $100 bills tend to have the greatest concentration of cocaine residue because apparently, I don't do coke, I've never done coke, so I don't really know if this is the case. Apparently, uh, you need a sturdy uh, device to, to snort it, and the, the $100 bill is just sturdier fiber to curl it up and snort it. Anyway, just thought you should know. The end of the show, everyone. Thank you very much. Cocaine on your dollar bill. Goodbye. No, let's go back on to the more wholesome facts. The first $1 notes were actually printed in 1862, and they featured then Secretary of the Treasury Salmon P. Chase, who put himself on the $1 bill because he thought that it would make him more famous and increase his chances of becoming elected president. President Washington wasn't actually put on the dollar bill until 1869. So let's start with this portrait right here in the center of the bill of President Washington. This is a very famous portrait. It's actually called the Athenaeum portrait, and it was painted by a prolific American artist, Gilbert Stuart, back in 1796, when George Washington was about 65 years old. So it was painted of him about three years before he died. And this is interesting. You can actually see the painting, which is unfinished, in the Museum of Fine Arts in Boston. So next time I'm in Boston, I am seriously going to go to the MFA and see this painting solely because it's on the $1 bill and I've become such a $1 bill history nerd. So that's the center. Now let's look to the left of George Washington. You notice on each dollar bills, there is a banknote on it, which has a letter. And then in the corners of the front of the $1 bill, there are numbers. So this particular bill I have, it's D, and then there are four fours around it. There are 12 Federal Reserve banks all throughout the United States. This is according to the Federal Reserve Act, which was passed about 100 years ago. And this is where they print paper money. The mint prints coins, or not prints, makes, I should say, coins, but the Federal Reserve Banks have a bureau of engraving in each of the banks that, that print uh, these, these bills that we see. So if you hold on to a dollar, you can see which Federal Reserve Bank this came from. So as I said, this one has a D on it, which indicates that it came from Cleveland, Ohio. You can just go online to the Fed's website and see what uh, letter and what number corresponds with which Federal Reserve Bank. Kind of neat, isn't it, that I'm holding a bill that originated six years ago in Cleveland, and it was passed and passed and passed all the way to uh, Los Angeles. Now, of course, it could have flown on a plane, but just for the sake of making it interesting, let's just say that it was passed hand to hand. Very, it very well could have across the United States. So that's on the, the left side of President Washington. Let's go to the right side. That is the Treasury Seal. Now, if you take a magnifying glass and you look really close at the Treasury Seal, that itself is a piece of artwork. That's what I love about this whole venture. The whole $1 bill is a piece of art, but each individual symbol is too. So the Treasury Seal has remained unchanged since 1789, and it has an image of arms depicting scales, which represent justice, and a key for authority, and it also has a chevron of 13 stars. 
the number 13, you should remember, will be very important uh, throughout this episode. It's all over the $1 bill, and of course, it is a nod to the 13 colonies. Other things to note on the front of the dollar bill, there is a serial number in green. The serial number is just to register in the system that this is a legitimately printed, i.e. not counterfeit, dollar bill. Now what's cool is that if you are lucky enough to get a certain dollar bill, you can make a lot of money selling that bill. If you look at the serial number and you have a low serial number, that is, it starts with four zeros and then it ends in whatever numbers, but as long as it starts with three or four zeros, you can actually sell it on eBay and bill collectors, I may be the next one, <laughs> uh, will, will buy it because apparently it was printed a long time ago. There are, there are bills actually from the 60s and 70s that are still in circulation and people are just discovering that they were printed all that long ago and then they put it on eBay and they make a killing. They make like three or four thousand dollars off of a one dollar bill. Also, another way that you can make money is if you have a star note. There will be a star next to the serial number if it happens that uh, when the dollar bill was printed, the people at the Fed made a mistake. Maybe the, um, the cartridge wasn't full of ink or something went wrong, but they'll put a, put a star next to the serial number to indicate that something went wrong. And uh, collectors and money junkies seem to like that too. So every time you get a dollar bill, make sure to look because you could be uh, winning the lottery, really, without even uh, knowing it. So then finally, bill series. If you look at the bottom right of the bill, you can see when it was printed. As I said, my bill was printed in 2017. And then there is the signature of the Secretary of the Treasury at the time that it was printed. So this is a Trump era dollar bill. So Steve Mnuchin signed the, the, uh, the dollar here at the bottom. Another note, keep the dollar bills you have now especially if you're young. This is something that I'm doing. Even if you don't have a low serial number, even if you don't have a star note, I'm sure one day this series 2017 Steve Mnuchin dollar bill will be worth some money. So hoard your cash, people. See, I'm making you all make money and I'm giving you something cool to, to learn. I'm the best host ever. All right, flip, other side of the, uh, the $1 bill. This is my favorite side. Oh wait, I'm sorry, we have to go back for a minute because this is very, very important. The front, I missed perhaps the most important symbol of all. Did you know that there are actually spiders on the $1 bill? Secret spiders that you can really only see if you have a good pair of eyes or a magnifying glass. Look at the bottom center left and the bottom center right of your dollar. You will see a black mound and in it, there is a spider, and it's the same thing on the other side. Also, in the top right corner of the bill, this is really hard to see, there's a crevice in the seal that has the, the one for one dollar, and there's a little spider in there too. So there are three spiders on the front of this bill. If you also look at the bill, you'll see that there's kind of a, a lot of imagery of a web uh, webbed imagery. There's also uh, imagery of, uh, of leaves and greenery. Apparently, the imagery of a, of a spider or a spider's web was, was intentional. Spiders are seen as industrious. They're always building. They're always expanding. That is what the designers of the bill wanted the United States to be known as, a country that was always industrious and expanding. Similarly, of course, if you look at uh, imagery of plants, it evokes the same feelings and symbols of growth. Okay, now that we've gotten that very important symbol <laughs> behind us, let's flip over to the other side. Here we have the Great Seal of the United States. The Great Seal of the United States is not just one seal. There's a front, which is actually called the obverse of the Great Seal. That's a fancy word for the front. And then there's the reverse of the Great Seal, which is the back. Now you may, may be wondering, how is this working? They're right next to each other. How can one be the obverse and one be the reverse? Well, it's referred to as that because originally 
United States money was on coins. And so when the Great Seal was designed, it was on a coin, which of course is obverse, and then you flip it over and it is reverse. In order to know which side of the Great Seal someone is referring to, they call the one with the eagle the obverse and the one with the pyramid the reverse. So let's look at the obverse, the one with the eagle. It's on the right side of uh, the, the center of the bill. There is an eagle, of course, which is a symbol of the United States, a symbol of strength and power, knowing, because an eagle flies high and, and can see all. If you look at the shield on the breast of the eagle, there is a, a blue horizontal band with 13 stripes going horizontally. And then at the bottom of the seal, there are red and uh, white horizontal uh, Sorry, the top is horizontal, the bottom is vertical. 13 vertical uh, red and, and white uh, bands, again, of course, representing the 13 colonies. Now, the right talon of the eagle holds a olive branch symbolizing peace. Unsurprisingly, there are 13 leaves in that olive branch. On the left hand of the eagle, so if you're looking at it, it's on the right, but the eagle's hand, it's, it's on the left, there is a talon with uh, 13 uh, arrows, which symbolizes war. Now this, the, the sides that the eagle is holding these two symbols was chosen very specifically. The dominant hand of the eagle, that is the right side, is holding the olive branch to symbolize that the United States wants peace over war. Similarly, the eagle's face is looking towards the right side, towards the right talon, holding the olive branch because again, we the United States prefer peace over war. Okay, also above the eagle is a crest with a constellation of 13 stars, quote, to denote a new state taking its place and rank among other sovereign powers. That is so cool. That was uh, said by one of our founding fathers. Let's look at the reverse side of the seal. This is the one with the pyramid. I don't want to choose favorites of which side uh, of, of the Great Seal, but I would actually have to say this one is my favorite because it's less known and it is so packed with meaning. There are 13 layers of a pyramid, but, but it's an it's a, um, unfinished pyramid. So you can see that the topmost one doesn't uh, keep going. It's just laid bare. 13, symbolizing the 13 colonies. The bottom the, of the, uh, the pyramid, the base of it, has in Roman numerals the year 1776. Above the pyramid, there is an eye, which people call the eye of providence. Again, referring to this fact that, that providence played a great role in the founding of the United States. And then there are these two Latin slogans, if you will at the top of the seal and at the bottom of the seal. The top Latin phrase is annuit coeptus. It means, quote, providence has favored our undertakings. This is a, a quote from the Roman poet Virgil. And then the Latin phrase below the pyramid is novus ordo secorum, which also is a quote from the Roman poet Virgil, and it means a new order for the ages. Who knew all of this was in the bill? Seriously, as I said in the introduction, we carry this around in our pockets. We just whip it out whenever we want to buy something. We don't even take a minute to look at it. And this, however six inch long piece of paper has so much national imagery and symbolism packed into it. It really is a work of art. So again, the significance of the number 13 on this dollar cannot be overstated. 13 arrows are held by the eagle's left claw. 13 olive branches are held by the right claw. There are 13 steps on the pyramid, 13 stripes and 13 stars on the great seal. Also, this is a particularly cool fact. Two of the Latin phrases, the mottos of our nation, have 13 letters in them. Anuit coptis and e pluribus unum, which means out of many one. I forgot to mention that e pluribus unum is at the top of the uh, obverse side of the great seal above the eagle. Now moving on to some fun facts about the $1 now that we've done some analysis. There's this fun website called Where's George where you can tell which zip code a particular serial number of a dollar bill has been into. I actually looked this up 
and it has been through 500 zip codes. I think it's probably been through more. It, 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 uh, the website is relying on people who have already made submissions, but still, that's really cool. 500 different zip codes that this dollar I hold in my hand has traveled through. There was also a law passed in 1955 that made it mandatory for all US currency to bear the phrase, in God we trust, which I think is a wonderful decision because Judeo-Christian values are the basis of our nation, so it ought to be, at the very least, on our currency. As I said, a star note is a replacement for original, which was misprinted, and you can make a lot of cash off of the star note. You can double fold a bill over 4,000 times before it breaks. And also, just another fact to put in your pipe and smoke, you can actually use a torn $1 bill if you can put the two sides together in an orderly fashion. You can put tape around it, hand it over, and it will still count. I hope that you enjoyed the show today. Be sure to take out a magnifying glass and look really close at your money because it is very interesting. You will see more on this show as I will analyze other dollar bills and maybe even coins if I get really excited about it. I hope to see you all soon. Take care. Mm -hmm.